Good day. My name is Sue Wyatt and the Unit Coordinator for Introduction to Family History, Diane Snowden, has asked me to talk about using a blog to present your family history research. So first, a little about me. I've been researching my family history for nearly 40 years. Mainly, it was names, dates and places. We'd have family reunions and I'd write in longhand my family tree on huge rolls of newsprint paper and would display them in the hall at Evandale, Tasmania. But now I've caught up with technology and I have a database on my home computer using the software program called the Master Genealogist. There are over 8,000 names on the database. But having started this course, I've realised that I'm not really talking about all my ancestors. I now need to start telling their stories. But how do I do that? I started with a website, but this was very static. The guest book that I had was broken, so people couldn't leave any comments. It was very hard to add new pages to it, and the software was no longer being supported. But in 2008, I had started blogging with students and teachers. So there was an obvious choice. Why not use a blog? to present my family history and the stories of the individuals. But what is a blog? A blog is a bit like an online journal or a diary. You can keep it private or you can open it up for the world to read. You can add to it every day, once a week, once a month. Forget about it for a year and then come back to it. It's always there. A blog is made up of various parts. At the top you'll have the header, where you have the title of your blog. You also have pages. You create these, but they are usually static. They don't change very much. My About Me page will probably stay the same for a while. I've written a page telling why I've called my blog All the Seas We Go. Also a page explaining how to leave a comment. I have a list of all the surnames that I've mentioned in my blog and the different types of reports that I've been including in there. Over on the right hand side you'll see a subscription box. This is used to allow family and friends to subscribe. As soon as I've written a post, they'll get an email sent directly to them that says, here's the new post that's been written by Sue. It allows them the chance to read the post and leave a comment for you. You can also have more than one author on a blog. If you're writing a blog all about the Colgrave family and you know there are two or three of you doing the research, you can all become administrators or editors of the same blog. You can each then add your own posts. You can also see where people are coming from on your blog and that's by having a cluster map or a visitors map. You can click on the map and go even further to see which parts of the USA, Europe or Australia your visitors are from. Your visitors can also leave comments and that's what we're going to do is to have a quick look at one here where Ray has left me a comment on this post called Where is Isabella in the Census? Ray read the blog post about my ancestor not being on the 1841 census in England and how I searched the newspapers only to realise that she was on a convict ship in the middle of the Thames River on the census date. Ray left me a comment explaining how she'd had a similar incident. I've read her comment and commented back to her. When you come onto a blog there is always an area where you can click for comments and you will get something that looks similar to this. You need to fill in your name, 
your email address, write your comment in here. Usually there's an anti-spam word just to prove that you're a human being and you write that in this box. If you want to have an email sent to you whenever somebody leaves a comment on just this post, you need to click this little box here and then you finally post your comment. So you can see we're already connecting. The advantages of a blog is connecting with other people. When you write your post, there are lots of different things you can do. You can include images that have been taken by other people. These have to be Creative Commons. If your blog is open to the world, they need to be Creative Commons. Some blogging platforms allow you to get these images very quickly, perhaps by using a website like Compfight. It also gives you the credit underneath the image, which makes it very easy for you. You can also include videos related to your topic or that you've made yourself, and these can be added to a blog post. Here is one from Link Tasmania explaining how to use the Tasmanian Names Index. You can also put in your own images, like this one I have of the information I have so far about William Smith. I just put in my own image that I had saved on my computer. If you're going to use images that you've taken though from a book, microfilm, newspaper, you need to get permission from that repository. They own the book or the microfilm and you need to include attribution or a citation at the end of your post saying that you've been given permission to use this image. You can also add things like interviews to your blog. I interviewed my father using an app on my iPad. This then allowed me to embed that particular interview here. People reading my blog now can just click on the arrow and they can actually hear my interview. Again, you need to have permission from the person that you're interviewing. Down the side of the blog, you'll find that there find ways that your visitors can look for posts that they might be interested in. I have it set up that the most recent 10 posts are there. I also have a bit further down the blog other hints that people can use to find a post and these are called categories. Every post I've written about a surname Colgrave will be in this category area. Just click on the name and up all the posts will come. Every post I've written about the Jackson surname will be there. But people might want to go further. They don't want to know about all the Jacksons. They want to know about one particular person. So what they might need to do is to find Rebecca Jackson and here's the tag link that will take them to posts that are just about Rebecca Jackson or just the posts about John England. In this tag area those that are largest means that there are more posts on that topic. For example Captain William Smith has 11 topics. But if we look at Evandale, 
I've only mentioned that twice in any of the posts I've written. So categories and tags are very important to help your readers find their way around your blog. There are also other things you can do on your blog. Here I've got some links. These are to some other Australian bloggers and you can just click on the link and it will take you straight to their blog. I've got links to different repositories such as the Australian War Memorial and the National Archives of Australia. To different websites such as Cora Num's website called Cora Web. I do a lot of Tasmanian research so links to different websites or places where records are kept about Tasmania. And finally other websites and magazines that I've found helpful in genealogy research. You can also add widgets such as searching trove or one that allows your visitors to share your blog through various social media. I hope this little presentation has helped you with your thoughts about one way to present your information once you've researched the person that your plan is about.